Hi, and welcome to the Two Weird Hungry Girls podcast. I'm Phoebe. And I'm Tracy. And we're weird. And hungry. And there are two of us. <laughs> <laughs> which, which makes it pretty clever to call us the two weird hungry girls or the two thirsty hungry girls as sometimes you suggested. it's yes i think i think eventually if we don't yeah. uh you know so rein it in a little table, we're right <laughs> the bottles and the and the guests with the booze and they have great information they though. do no they really do yeah, they like make they bring boozing to a new level yeah like they refine it yes mm-hmm. educate yeah I it think is so. interesting. It's very interesting. This month was a good episode or a good like series of podcasts. Mm-hmm. I think with Kevin, it was pretty amazing and his his information about beer, mm-hmm. dessert mm-hmm. beer. Yeah, dessert beer, and then so. that one cocktail that you made with the cherry thing. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, that. I don't like to brag, but that was a pretty darn good cocktail. That was super good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the roasted cherries. Mm-hmm. And then the fig fashioned. Because you're a big yes. fan of like old fashions too. I am a big fan of old fashions. I mm-hmm. love old fashions. So that was a delightful treat. Yes. It was. There's no well, booze this time, is there? No, we have champagne. That's right. You have champagne. I wasn't sure if I could say that. Yes, you can yes, say that. Yes, we have champagne. Yeah, because it was my birthday recently. We're celebrating Phoebe. Yeah, it was. Well, thank you. That's really sweet. Aww. Um, yeah, so it was my birthday recently. Yay. Happy birthday again. Aw, thank you. <laughs> well, and anyway. so we'll have to find out what you did on your birthday. So I did... I took a very special weekend mm-hmm. off with my friend. Oh, you know Nan. Yeah. Okay, Chubby Pickle yes. Farms. She is just a riot to spend a day with. Fun. And she's like game for anything. So it was a lot of fun. So That's I said, awesome. Nan, we have to do Veg Fest. But if you do Veg Fest, I don't mind driving, but you have to like do the rest of the day Phoebe style. Like we're going to get in the car <laughs> and we're going to see as much as we can see in one day. So I found out that the Beekman boys were coming to terrain have you ever been to terrain no no you do all this stuff i have to live vicariously through you no i should take you there too okay you really need to go yeah do you like gardening i don't okay garden it's not to say i don't like it because i don't do it so maybe if i did it i would i don't think you have to like to garden to appreciate terrain like it's more of like a lifestyle shopping experience okay Mm -hmm. and they have like a beautiful garden area where you can buy potted plants and all of that stuff and they have inspiration for whatever yeah. Your garden vegetable or flowers. Yeah. But then they have like a huge area that's full of home decor. Okay. Um, inside decor or outside decor? Both. Inside and oh, outside. Oh, fun. But it's in, I can't describe it. It's in what you would think would be like an old barn it kind of. Okay. But like an outbuilding of, s- of some sort? Some sort, but it's huge. And they have mm. beautiful skylights. Um, so they sell things from dining room table sets, like old barn table oh, wow. tables. Oh, wow beautiful chairs hand upholstered Mm -hmm. and then they have like gorgeous table displays and they would they have a whole section that's just terrariums is that how you pronounce it oh that's so cool terrariums yeah that's the thing with the plants inside of the magical place the fairies live in right (laughs) (laughs) and then they have like a a cooking section like you can pick up cookbooks oh wow and like really fun things to put in your cocktails Mm -hmm. or um sparkling water yeah and like beautiful cookbooks, plates, napkins. Oh my gosh, like it beautiful. sounds awesome. Beautiful. And then the bath section. Like beautiful bath Oh my bath god, a whole items, bath jewelry, section too. Scarves, blankets. There's nothing that you cannot find there that wouldn't give you inspiration for your home. And what is it called again? Terrain. Terrain. T-E-R-R-A-I-N. Mm. Terrain at Glen. It's at Glen Mills. It's in Glen Mills. But I think, anyway, Google well, it, it and you'll find beautiful. it. beautiful. Yeah, so the Beekman boys were there. Yes. And so that was part of my day. And I brought you a How special fun. cookie from VegFest in the morning. Yeah. And you've never had vegan treats, right? From Bethlehem? No. So okay. that's the name of the of who made this? The business. Look, yeah. This is like a chocolatey looking cookie with something. Is that peanut butter inside? Yes. Oh, so no. it's, called a cho- it's called a peanut butter surprise. And it's a huge cookie, like one of those, what? Is it like a four inch cookie? And mm-hmm. half of it's dipped in chocolate. Mm. It's a deep, dark chocolate. This and then is the delicious. inside is peanut butter, right? That is a surprise. Yeah. And you wouldn't think it's vegan, right? No, I would not. No. I would not think that's vegan. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you could do that. Mm-hmm. And she does beautiful desserts. Well, that's I mean, delicious. Veg Fest is fun and amazing and all of... I mean, they have like special speakers who do cooking demonstrations. Is it all vegan or vegetarian? Vegan. Wow. Yeah, it is. So I think it's a big feat to pull off. Oh, yeah. Um, Jamie was just on in August Mm -hmm. for the episode, and she's one of the people that puts it together. The kale girl. 
Yeah, Save the Kale. She's Save amazing. The kale. Yeah. So it's a it's a really big event that they do in Bethlehem and it's really great because it builds awareness about eating for health, eating for lifestyle. Yeah. They have like a pig adoption Aww. booth where you can like go and pet a pig. It's really instead cute. of eat it. Yeah, instead of eating a pork <laughs> shoulder. You can hug a pork shoulder for a dollar. <laughs> And they have great food. Cool. I mean, not necessarily gluten-free, but really good food. Like a lot of food trucks. Oh my Mm -hmm. gosh, just amazing food. I love food trucks. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. a really, it's a great event to go to. You don't have to be vegan to do it. So you should put it on your calendar if you want to do it like Phoebe style. With treats like that, I mean, I think it would be cool just to go to to see what they can do. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably an impression of vegan that is kind of like, what, what is that? Is it nuts and sticks? Mm Mm-hmm and berries oh, that's really awful yeah you know like it's vegan but that cookie yeah it's amazing like i will th- tell you listeners mm-hmm. it's delicious yes. and it's vegan and it's vegan not necessarily like good for you but it's vegan I don't, well it's chocolate yeah oh yes it is it's dark, dark chocolate. chocolate and there are protein in the nuts so it's delicious in the nuts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that was fun so we spent the morning up there mm-hmm. then drove all the way down to glen mills just down it was just near the border of Delaware Mm -hmm. and I had a chance to meet the Beekman boys yeah like I said like eight times and how (laughs) like you said like eight (laughs) times and how did you find out that they were there like what what put it in your head to I have no idea I have an eye for these things you do right I know what's going on everywhere yes yes oh everywhere wow I might might have missed something but it must not have been important right no I'm just kidding it's (laughs) whatever you know what it's like it's 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 something responding to your vibe. <laughs> That's how you find out about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who loves the Beekman boys as well, and she couldn't make it. And I was kind of sad about that because she really loves them. So I had a question that she had for them, and I asked. I had a chance to interview them. So, Fantastic. Yeah, and they were there to promote their new cookbook, which is called the Beekman 1802 Heirloom Vegetable Cookbook. And it was Brent and Josh, of course, who were the authors. Mm -hmm. But what's kind of cool about the cookbook series that they do, and this is the third one, it's their heirloom recipes. So they're recipes, I don't want to call them throwback or vintage, but they're recipes that have been around for generations. They have stood the test of time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice. They're really great um, recipes in the book. It's beautiful. Um, And it's full of some recipes, not just, I mean, they're vegetable based, but you can find like meat, like dinner and dessert recipes. Yeah cool yeah so i asked um one of the guys what um they would recommend for the holidays yeah so you have to listen in to the interview to Mm -hmm. hear some of the recipes that they suggest and you will actually be very surprised i might be yeah i might be i'm I'm surprised that you didn't bring them here for me as a special guest but i get it you would totally love them tracy (laughs) they were so authentic And I even got a hug from both of them, like Aww. more than one, because nice. and they seemed very genuine. Mm-hmm, and what was mm-hmm. very um, interesting to me is that when each guest came in with the cookbook to have it signed, they they were very, I mean, they were friendly. Yeah. But they were very authentic with them. And then they rooted through each of the customers' bags. <laughs> No. Like it would be like totally like you and I going and doing an event like, like that. Like, what did you get what there? What did you buy? Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was just so funny. But they said that's how they, um, they want to know what their customers are buying. Good. Right? It's just Good a fun them. way to connect mm-hmm. with people, right? Yeah, that is fun. It's like a little bit of just fun to have with people. Yeah. But um, they also have an online mercantile. So they want to know what people are buying. Yeah, what sure. What their customers are interested in. So it was a nice way to engage yeah, with their customers. Yeah, that's so cool. It was cute. Yeah. So you definitely have to listen in because mm-hmm. we recorded this as an intro to the short little interview. Yeah. Well, it's like your your lead in. Yeah. It's an official lead in. It's this is this is the official lead. Is there something and that we should say as an official lead in? I don't know. Maybe like okay, and now hear your interview with the Beekman brothers. Be- Be- Hi. <laughs> Cute. Well, you know what? We call the boys the Beaky Beak- Boys. <laughs> oh my gosh, I never thought I know, of that. It, it's a little close, and uh, that's what I have in my head. Yeah, but anyway, you're a beaky. yeah. And then you say, "Take it away." I don't <laughs> that's know. Perfect. I don't know if that's what you do. I think we should go with that. You have to do it. No, you should say, "Take it away." Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> well, so 
you I, I'm looking forward to hearing it because I haven't heard this this interview yet and I, I think, I'll like think it. you're very sparkly for going and finding them and doing that sparkly I think that's awesome they were sparkly too I bet it's, they sound sparkly what and before you do the lead-in yes okay. again okay. Um, <laughs> again uh, I have to tell you that when I let them know it's called the two weird hungry girls is the podcast mm-hmm. there's like where's the other where is the other hungry girl <laughs> Well, at least they didn't say, where's the other weird girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe that means they they thought you were weird and I'm hungry. Oh, my gosh. I don't remember. (laughs) I have to go and listen again. I don't know what they called me, but I got a hug and they were really nice. That is nice. That is nice. And And I'm looking forward to hearing it. Oh, cool. And it is an XO in there. Oh, they're still hugging you. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Okay, so do the Okay, do the so um, I can't wait to hear this interview that you did. And um, take it away. Hi, I'm Phoebe of Phoebe's Pure Food. Thanks for checking in to the Two Weird Hungry Girls podcast. I'm here today with two fabulous farmers. We're um, Weird Hungry Girls, too. You are? Yes. Yes. I love yes, that. at heart. And we're here at Terrain, and um, the Beekman boys are here signing their cookbook. It's the vegetable cookbook. The heirloom vegetable cookbook, yes. yep. And I'm kind of curious, because you guys seem to be have so much fun um, with their guests that are coming in with the cookbooks. And they're buying the cookbooks, and you're signing them. But you're also looking through their bags to see what they're buying. Of course. We're always curious to see what our fans like because that might develop into a new product for us or a new idea for us. So it's like market research. So what's some of the um, most interesting things you've found like digging through bags? Ooh, there's a corn salsa that looks really good. There's and there was uh, some ladybug chocolates that had oh, hazelnut, yes. hazelnut creme in the inside. From and they're, John and Kira. That's right. That's and they look like little ladybugs. Chocolate, yes. Yeah. And um, so I'm kind of curious at the holidays, thinking of like gifts like this and people coming in shopping. What are some of your favorite recipes from this cookbook that you would suggest, like for Thanksgiving or for Christmas? Entertaining. Oh, that's a good question. Because right now we're still thinking about the summer months. Yeah. Um, there's a great um, and interesting corn pie, a sweet oh. corn pie that you can serve okay. for dessert. And, we all, and a lot of our recipes are kind of twists on things mm-hmm. and th- uh, little things that are unexpected. Okay. So that sweet corn pie is a really good one for people to try. Okay. And then tonight at the dinner that they're making here um, at Terrain, um, they're making our beet chocolate cake. And so that's something really is interesting for people, too. Book? Yeah, that's in the new book. Okay, because I have heard of beet chocolate cake, and I feel like I need to try it, so I'll definitely do your recipe. Absolutely, okay. and that's something great to put on the Thanksgiving table because okay. it's unusual, yeah. and people think, oh, I'm not going to like that. And the beets give such a wonderful earthiness to the chocolate. Okay. Who's the savory and who's the sweet? I'm the savory. Okay. I'm definitely the sweet. I'm so the baker. You do the baking, all of the baking. Yes, okay. yeah. And that book I didn't see today, which is another one I want to pick up. Yes, Beekman so HM2 Heirloom Desserts. Okay. That came out last year. And do you have like a family recipe that's in that cookbook? Well, all of all of our cookbooks are, we call them all heirloom cookbooks. Right. And uh, the recipes in them come from either our families or our friends or our neighbors. And we tweak them in our own Beekman way. Because okay. so, we think recipes are sort of living things. Okay, you know? so when you took this huge leap of faith into this kind of industry... And you're sharing your heirloom family recipes, and you're sharing products from your, it's, it's an farm. online store, isn't it? We have a physical flagship to... store in okay. Sharon Springs, mm-hmm. New York, uh, and an online store. We ship all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, what, is like been, what has been the greatest reward, do you think, from doing this? Well, personally, you know, we, right now we um, work with over 48 craftspeople okay. in our, really within 50 miles of the farm. Mm-hmm. So we've been able to help support our local economy in a, in a pretty large way. And we just love working with these crafts people, a lot of whom are now able to make, you know, almost a full-time living at it. So mm-hmm. that's, to me, that's most rewarding. Mm-hmm. And what has been like some of the biggest, or one of the biggest hurdles? Is it like a- well, we started our company in 2008, mm-hmm. um, you know, in the midst of the recession. Uh, so I think that was probably one of the biggest hurdles, but we, um, you know, we really persevered based on our neighbors mm-hmm. and uh, meeting the local artisans and working with them so that, you know, as our business grew, all of their businesses grew. Um, so it really is a small town America success right. story. That's great, isn't it? Like it's a nice throwback, isn't it? It is. It is. Neighbors helping each culture other. Used to, the culture used to be. Um, so I have to ask one last question for my friend Kathleen, and she is one of your biggest fans, and she's curious to know why you haven't named your goat Kathleen yet. Well, for that, we're going to have to check with Farmer John. He's okay. the official namer. And she, one thing people might not know is that all the goats are named after the first initial of their mother. So oh, if it's Diana, okay. then it's Deirdre or, you okay. know, Dion. 
um, and that helps keep the lineages in line. So I don't know if we have a K-line, do we? But anything can be done if you send Farmer John something sweet. Oh, So if she can okay. bathe, bribe them. Like that, you know. Okay, that works. Okay, yeah. I'll have to tell her then. Okay, thank you so much. I'm so glad you guys made it to Pennsylvania, and I hope you're enjoying it. We love it at Terrain. Okay, we love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Great okay. talking to you.